Hello, this is the Balkan Architect and in this video I will talk about dimension styles. If you don't know how to place basic dimensions, I suggest you watch my video on placing dimensions. The link will be in the description below. So now the dimension style. The dimension style basically, basically determines how your dimension looks. It determines these arrows and the length of these lines, the numbers, everything. So in order to access that, you need to type in dimension style with, or dim style, which is the shortcut for the manager. So here we have dim style, enter, and here we have dimension style manager. So here we have our dimension styles. You see we have standard, which is this over here. That's basically what comes with AutoCAD when you buy it. And it's really not all that creative. So now we can either modify this we can set it current or we can create a new dimension style which is maybe a, lit, a little bit nicer so I'm just going to create a new I'm going to name it new dim style and this start with basically means it's going to copy everything that's in this dimension style and then we can start changing it so I'm just gonna leave that standard and go with continue. Now we have the new dimension style and here's basically all, all the settings. Here we have some tabs and we're going to start with the first one which is lines. Now here first we have dimension lines and first thing is color. Now you can change uh, the color, you can basically choose whichever color you want or what's a little better is to choose by layer. So this means that your layer will determine the color of your dimensions. Next you have line type, which is also controlled in this instance by block, but I suggest you leave it at by layer. So basically the layer will determine the line type and the same with the line weight. I usually leave it at by layer. Now we have this extend beyond ticks and you can see it's grayed out, you can't access it. That's because we have these ugly arrows and we don't really want them. So before we continue over here, we're just going to skip over to this symbols and arrows and just change this arrow head to oblique. We'll talk a bit later about it. So now we're just going to go back to lines and now we have this extend beyond ticks. This basically means what is the distance beyond this tick and how long will it extend. I usually leave it at let's say 20. We're doing this for the scale that will be 1 to 100. So I'm just going to leave here 20. Now let's go to extend beyond dim lines. Now you see when I clicked here this went all berserk and you can't really see anything. That's okay. When we change everything it will look normal again. So extend beyond dim lines is basically how far this line extends beyond the dim lines. You can see it here. And now I'm also going to type in 20 over here. Now we have this offset from origin. Offset from origin basically means how far from your drawing you want your dim lines to start. I usually leave it at 20 as well. And here we have fixed length extension lines and we have basically length but it's gray out, grayed out. If we check it that means that basically this distance over here will be fixed and you can basically write down how long would you like it to be. So I'm just going to type in 20 as well. Now here we have these extension lines and you can basically set the color. I usually leave it at by layer and you can change independently line 1 and line 2. Those are these vertical lines over here and this one that's over here you can't see it right now uh, I just leave them all at by layer because I think it's best when it takes from the layer these settings and you can suppress extension line 1 and extension line 2 that basically means it will just turn off this will be the one and the other is extension line 2 we should leave it there is no reason to suppress it now let's go to symbols and arrows. This is the symbol that's basically the end of your dimension. I like to leave it at oblique because I usually do architectural drawings and it's best to be left at 
that but you can open it up and you can change it maybe put a small dot or a filled box or whatever you like there's a lot of choice over here this is for the first one this is for the second one whatever you do I suggest you leave the same one on both of them now we have arrow size that is basically this distance over here and in this case I will just leave it at 20. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to text. Now you can see this is all berserk, doesn't matter, it will be okay at the end. Here with the text style you can basically choose which text style you, would you like to have. You click on these three dots over here and you can choose your font. So here we have font name. I usually like Century Gothic so I'm going to find where it is. Century Gothic, okay, it looks quite nice. And you can put it bold or maybe bold italic or just italic, I prefer regular. For a size, I suggest you don't really touch this. This allows AutoCAD to try to determine the size according to the scale and I just prefer not to use it, it usually messes it up. Here we have some effects, upside down, backwards, you don't really need to use it. And this width factor just messes up the font. You can see if I type in 2, it's just silly. So just leave it at 1. I'm just going to set it current. Yes, save changes. And close. Now we have here a text color. I prefer to use it by layer again just to have everything the same color and fill color we don't really have fill in this type uh, in this uh, text style so we're just gonna leave it at none as far as text height that basically determines the height of the text or numbers in this case I'm just going to type in let's say 15 and here we have text placement we have vertical horizontal and view direction I always keep it above oh, you can see here now it's going back to normal because text is now according to all these uh, line dimensions now when we go above you can see now text is above if we put it center now this is outside centered it will be in the center so I like to keep it above as far as horizontal placement I like to keep it centered just in the middle of the dim line you don't want to move it around and view direction left to right as always. Now offset from dim line that is basically this size of this offset over here and I leave it usually a good rule of thumb is the third of what your text height is. So my text height is 15 so my offset will be 5. And I usually for text alignment I leave it aligned with dimension line so you can see now everything is aligned if we check horizontal this will be horizontal and it's it just doesn't look right so I leave it aligned and next we have fit this is not really important and now units units this is very important usually keep it at decimal that's what I prefer precision I leave it just zero decimal places this is an archi for architectural drawings you don't really need them and the round of point I'd leave it at zero for decimal separator that's basically if we, you had basically this you can leave it at period or comma or just an empty space if you're using decimal spaces I suggest you leave period but I'm not going to use them scale factor means if you're printing exact uh, if you're trying to print some specific scale but I suggest you do everything in AutoCAD in one to one and then set up the scale later if you're interested in watching a tutorial on how you set up scale I suggest you watch the video in the description so that's pretty much it for this dimension styles you just go OK we find our new dimension style we click set current we close this dialog and let's go to this object over here we go dim enter and when we place our style and you can see when we pull it out it looks like that and I'm just going to hit escape so that's how you set up the dimension style in AutoCAD thank you for watching please subscribe for daily videos leave a comment 
like this video, share it and have a nice day.